Have you ever wondered why Russian air defense is considered one of the most feared in the world? While most countries rely on fighter jets for protection, Russia builds a wall of missiles and guns that can stop almost anything in the sky. From drones to fighter jets, even cruise missiles, nothing is safe once it enters Russian airspace. Welcome to Battlefield Classroom, where we break down the machines that shape modern warfare. So before we start, hit that like button and subscribe, because today we're going deep inside the Russian air defense network. Tor, Buk M2, Panzer S1, Srela 10, and the two S6 Tunguska. Let's begin. To understand Russia's air defense, we need to start with the concept of layers. Unlike the West, Russia doesn't just rely on jets in the air. They build a full shield on the ground. Imagine it like an onion with many layers. The outer layer is made of long-range systems like the S-400. The middle layer uses systems like Buk and Tor. And the inner layer is protected by short-range units such as Pansir, Strela, and Tunguska. Each layer talks to the other. They share radar data and respond to threats automatically. This network is what makes Russian air defense so difficult to penetrate. Let's start with the TOR system, known by NATO as the Gauntlet. This is the close bodyguard of Russian ground troops. Developed in the 1980s and upgraded many times, the TOR is a fully automatic short-range defense system. Its radar and missiles are mounted on a single vehicle. That means it can stop, scan, and shoot without help from any other unit. Each TOR carries eight ready-to-fire missiles. It can destroy targets up to 12 kilometers away, flying as low as 10 meters above the ground. Perfect for intercepting drones or cruise missiles. In recent conflicts, TOR systems have been seen shooting down multiple drones at once. Its computer can track several targets simultaneously and fire within seconds. The TOR is not just fast, it's smart. It's designed to protect moving tank columns, command posts, or air bases on the front line. Do you think systems like the TOR are still effective against modern hypersonic weapons? Tell me what you think in the comments. Now let's move one step higher to the Book M2, known as the Grizzly. This is Russia's medium-range air defense system. The Book's job is to protect larger areas from enemy aircraft, helicopters, and even some ballistic missiles. Its radar can detect targets from 160 kilometers away. Its missiles can reach out to about 45 kilometers. Each launcher carries four missiles and can operate independently. Or as part of a bigger air defense battery. It's flexible, fast, and battle-proven. The book has seen real combat, from Georgia to Syria, and now in Ukraine. Its ability to lock on and fire at multiple targets makes it one of the most dangerous systems in the Russian arsenal. In Russian strategy, the book works together with other systems. If a long-range radar spots a threat, the book takes over to intercept it. This cooperation forms a deadly chain of defense that covers every altitude and distance. Western pilots call this layered system a nightmare. Because once you enter the radar net, there's almost no escape. Next is one of the most famous and most talked about systems, the Pansir S-1. It's known for combining missiles and guns on the same turret. The Pansir can hit targets up to 20 kilometers away using missiles. And if the enemy gets closer, it switches to twin 30mm autocannons that fire hundreds of rounds per second. This dual setup makes Pansir incredibly versatile. It can destroy small drones, rockets, helicopters, and even artillery shells mid-air. You'll often see Pansir mounted on Kamazi trucks or tracked vehicles, depending on the mission. 
It's designed to protect high-value targets like airfields, radar stations, and missile launchers. In Syria, Pansir systems defended Russian bases from drone swarms and missile attacks. Some units were lost, often because they were overwhelmed by too many targets at once, or not properly supported. But despite those failures, the Pansir remains one of the most advanced short-range systems in the world. If the Tor is the soldier, the Pansir is the gunslinger. Fast, flexible, and always ready to shoot. So here's a question. If you had to defend your base, which one would you choose? Tor or Pansir? Let's see your pick in the comments. Before high-tech systems, there was the Strela 10. Simple, light, and effective for its time. It was built during the Cold War to protect tank units from low-flying aircraft. The Strela uses infrared-guided missiles and doesn't rely on radar. Operators aim visually and fire, similar to a shoulder-launched missile, but mounted on a vehicle. Its range is about 5 kilometers. Not much by modern standards, but still deadly against helicopters and drones. The Strela 10 is small, quiet, and fast. It can move quickly with armored units, making it perfect for hit-and-run air defense. Many countries still use it today, either upgraded or in reserve units. It's simple, reliable, and cheap to maintain. A true survivor from the Soviet era, now let's talk about the 2S6 Tunguska, the older brother of the Pansir. Developed in the early 1980s, the Tunguska was the first vehicle to combine guns and missiles on one chassis. It carries twin 30mm cannons and eight surface-to-air missiles. Its main mission is to protect tank divisions from air attacks. The system can track and engage multiple targets day or night in all weather. It was revolutionary for its time and served as the foundation for the later Pansir design. Even today, many Tunguskas are still in service with upgrades, showing how strong the original concept was. Fast firepower, mobility and radar precision all in one platform. Together, these five systems form the backbone of Russia's short and medium-range air defense. Tor, Buk, Pansir, Strela, and Tunguska. Each one has its role, its range, and its unique personality. When combined with long-range systems like the S-300 and S-400, they create one of the most complex defense networks ever built. A shield capable of covering entire cities and army groups. In modern warfare, where drones and precision missiles dominate, Russia still relies on its philosophy. If it flies, shoot it down. So, which one impressed you the most? Would you command the precision of Tor or the firepower of Pansir? Tell us in the comments and make sure to subscribe to Battlefield Classroom for more deep dives into military technology and tactics from around the world. Thanks for watching and see you in the next battle.